Head over to moneyball.com.au for next week's huge Super Bowl event, the Denver Broncos versus the Carolina Panthers. With entry fees only $15, we are guaranteeing a $5,000 prize pool. That's right, for a measly $15, you can have a bit of fun and a bit of banter with the boys, yeah, the boys, plus a chance to win a piece of the $5,000 cash prize pool. Head over to moneyball.com.au and sign up for free today. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of The Locker Room. I'm here with Jay Moss, a.k.a. Jay Morris. <laughs> No twin jokes, bro. I promise, no twin jokes, because yeah, I know right. that's going to kill you. <laughs> so, what you're into preseason now? How are you feeling? You know, is it good to be back? Are you are you feeling refreshed? All that kind of stuff. How are you feeling? Oh uh, yeah, I had a, I had a good holiday. That's for sure. Yep. We um, went over to Bali for two weeks with the partner and ate plenty and <laughs> celebrated uh, yep. a, bit, a bit too hard. But um, <laughs> it uh, it doesn't take long to work it back off when you get into preseason. Um, before Christmas, you, you're pretty much doing the brunt of your long distance running and, yep. and um, you know, doing those skill sessions and um, in the heat. And oh, it man. gets pretty tough today. I think it's yep. about 38 degrees. So, Would have um, felt like a million degrees. Yeah, I think the weight drops off you pretty quick that you <laughs> yeah, yep. managed to uh, put on. And um, oh, it's, it's been good. I mean, you know, getting older these days, so I've got to be more aware of my body and, and making sure that I'm doing the, the right things with my recovery to make sure that I can stay out there. Um, on Friday, um, the Friday just gone, uh, it's probably the sorest I've ever been. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, I've wow. been doing pre-season since 2004 or 2005. And yeah, I, I got out <laughs> no. of bed and um, I thought, how am I going to do this? But you know, you, your body and your mind yep. just, just push you through it. You're just so used to it yep. after so many years. And, and how's the feeling around the club? You know, you, you guys had... It, it was a weird year for you guys last year. You know, there were times when you were looking really, you know, like you could be contenders all the way to the end, and then there were times where you were inconsistent. How, how's the feeling around the club at the moment? You've lost a few, but in saying that, you've still got a really good young pack. What's the feeling like? Yeah, I, I think last year uh, was extremely frustrating. Yep. Um, yeah. I think, you know, to start the year, I think we were 4-1, and... One and Yep. came into that South game and um, we all know what happened there with players getting injured and yep. suspensions and that kind of derailed our season and yep. we were inconsistent throughout. I mean, um, I, I don't think we could have beaten the, the Broncos or the Cowboys if, if we would have played them in the finals. Yep. Um, I, I thought they, the level they showed in the grand final, yeah, th- they were two deserving yep. teams to be there. And um, I guess we talked about the, the season that we had and the inconsistencies and um, I guess that's where, where we had to look at um, in our attack. We probably suffered a little bit, and um, that's something that we've looked at. And, and Desi's been drilling into us um, you know, since we've been back. Yep. And um, it's been would it be about four or five years now that Desi's been there, eh? Yeah, he came over in 2012. So Three, four years. Um, yeah, four, four, years. Years. four years, I think. And, so. and has he really cemented his culture there now? Is there a strong kind of feeling that you know this is? you know, Des's club and, and you've got, got a strong culture there or is it? Yeah, oh, mate, I think um, yeah, when Des came in, um, yeah, we went from a, a professional club to an ultra-professional club yep. and that's not bagging anyone. That's just that's just the way Des is. Yep. Like, he wants the best of everything and he wants the, you know, the most in-depth technology so yep. that he can see, you know, your heart rate and how your body is and all those little things and, um, you know, he wants the best for his players and yep. you know, and, and that transpires out on the field. You know, we've been lucky enough to be in two grand finals in, in four years. Um, yeah, been on crazy. the wrong, wrong end of both of yep. them. But um, you know, that, that is certainly success there, making grand finals. I feel like people, like the Bulldogs, are, it's a, they're such a strange club in, from an outsider's perspective because as you just said, you've been in two grand finals in the last four years and yet some people don't like... You don't get put. Uh, you do and you don't. Like it's, some days you get put in the same sentences as, as your clubs, like your Rabbitohs and your Roosters, and then some days you don't. It's 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 really weird because you you are always there or thereabouts, even when you do have a lot of injuries, even when you. It's kind of credit to your squad and, and to Desi. Um, so like going forward with with the uh, with the youth that you do have in the side, like Clemmer and stuff like that, is it is it something that Des has kind of I guess focused on the youth coming through, or is it just whatever kind of fits fits. Yeah, I think um, yeah, we certainly do have uh, a fair few young players there that are you know really good players. We've got Josh Jackson, Moses and yep. David Clemmer, and and then you got old blokes like um, myself and Brett and James. But he's only like twenty eight, like it's <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, there's a there's a good mix there. But yep. there's also um, th- these are types of players that you could build a, 
a club around 100%. the Josh Jacksons yep. and the David Clemmers and I think it's important that we keep them moving forward and yep. and they keep the, the culture going that, that Des has instilled. And with yourself personally, when you went to the Bulldogs, you were playing Origin within a year. Was there ever a time when you left the Dragons because it was such, you know, Morris' name is such a, I guess, it was such a big part of the Dragons, I guess. Was there ever a time when you kind of like, because you had some injuries in the first year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I um, tore the ligament off my big toe. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so I was out for about six weeks with that. Was that like, did you ever, not, not regret your decision, obviously you never did, but was there ever like a worry like, because it, it was a high profile move, there was a lot of talk about it, you left your brother, he was still in the Dragons, you obviously would have missed playing with him and you would have missed the Dragons. Was there a time where you're like, oh fuck, like I'm injured or, or you never really doubted it, it was always, because I mean your origin within a, in a year. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm not too sure. I, you know, I always made sure that I was watching Brett's games. Yeah, yeah. For the first couple of years there, I, you know, made sure that I was I was watching every game, and then yep. I guess you kind of just you know grow out of it. Yeah, yep. um, Your love for for your own club becomes stronger, and um, you, you're right. In, in that first year, I ended up playing Origin, and um, yeah, I guess it was kind of a, a point um, I had to prove to myself as well. I I wanted to be a centre and I wanted to, to play rep football as a centre and um, yep. that was one of my goals. It probably came a bit quicker than I thought. Yeah. But um, yeah, 2009 was um, yeah, it was up there with one of my best years, that's for sure. Was it, was it satisfying? Like, you know, you got, you, you got, you essentially, you didn't get told that you weren't a first grader, but you, went, you were not told that you were wanted as much as you probably should have been told that you were at the Dragons. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess yeah, they had every right to do that. I mean, yeah. they had... Coops and yeah, Gaz Coops. there, and yeah. um, I think they were both playing for New South Wales at that stage. Yeah, so that's pretty. Here tough. I am, a young fella, you know, wanting to to take over one of their positions, and yeah. Um, yeah, I guess yeah, yeah, three doesn't go into two. And yeah. The irony um, is, you, you were playing centre the next next year for Origin. Was it on the wing or centre? No, in centre. So centre, yeah, so it was a, yeah, a little bit ironic, yeah. but I, I guess those types of things that you know build your character, yeah. um, and they make you want to prove people wrong. Yeah, and. Um, you know, when things are said like that, it generally um, makes you want to prove people wrong that yeah, yeah. you deserve to, to be in that position and, and um, you know, playing good football at the Bulldogs helped me achieve those goals. Yeah. And what do you reckon? It, do you think that there was anything in particular that the Bulldogs kind of offered you that made you not not rise that level because you were already playing really good footy. That was, the, that was just, I think, the sh- most shocking thing when you did leave the Dragons is because you were playing such good footy and you were, you were considered... You know, one of the best young players in the comp. Was it? Was there anything that Bulldogs offered differently that brought that footy out of you to be an Origin centre, or was it just, just that kind of drive to not prove the naysayers because you're a professional athlete, so you're always going to train hard. But you know, what I mean, that drive to just get that spot. Yeah, I guess um, when I went and spoke to the Bulldogs, um, Kevin Moore was the incoming coach, and um, you know, he pretty much told me that you know, I'll be playing in the centres and and. You know, he wouldn't drop me um, if I had so a bad game player. or anything like that, and you know that just gave me Helps the world so of confidence much, yeah. and and that much self belief in myself that you know I was a good centre. And um, when you you have that kind of support, um, I guess you want to repay them back. Yeah. And um, he showed me that faith, and um, I guess the, the the good football came off you know that confidence and that belief that the coach was backing me to to, to be a good centre, and um, yeah, it certainly worked out well. And so you you've played you played fifty games for the St George you played one hundred and fifty for the Doggies, so you'd be twenty eight you'd have to play what four more years and you could probably you, could, you might even do you, do you set the goal on three hundred games like do you think that is a possibility for yourself or is it not really in your head? Oh, look, because <laughs> you're at, what yeah two hundred uh, nearly at I think I'm at about one ninety five or yep. something like that so. Um, yeah, even two fifty would be nice. I mean, yeah, okay, two in, soon, in yeah. the the generation that we are now with the game getting oh, so man. much quicker and the toll it kilos. takes on your bodies I mean these these blokes that have played 300 games it's just an amazing feat yep. and it's absolutely incredible and um, yeah, I'll be very happy you know, to, to be a 250 game yep. player for sure and um, yeah like my hat goes off to those blokes that it's crazy, have eh? played, <laughs> played that many games and, and then you take into account the origins and the yep. test, test footy that they've played um you know, it, it takes a toll on your body, and these yep. blokes were absolute warriors that have got that. I guess you know, 300 would be awesome, but 
I mean, you never know what's going to happen in the next <laughs> yeah. three years, let yeah. alone um, tomorrow. So. Um, so, 2009, you played for your, for your state before Australia, and then you made your debut against France in uh, the end of 2009. Yep. What was that like? Was it was it the similar feeling? you know to the origin obviously origin it's a, it's a weird kind of uh like it's a weird obviously i've never felt it but it's a weird uh situation because like origin is obviously the biggest game like it just obviously is like you can't deny that fact and yet playing for your country is something that's like culturally you know something huge what, what was the feeling like for you putting on the jersey compared to the origin one um oh look in the, in the first origin it was kind of a weird preparation for me because um i was 19th man yep and I went back to play for my club. I think it was on the Friday. Yeah. So I played on the Friday, and then on the Sunday, Craig Wing tore his hammy, and I got called into the side and got put on the bench. <laughs> and I've never come off the bench <laughs> in my life before. And I don't get I don't get nervous in games, yeah. Yeah. but I was sitting on the bench, and when they called my name, <laughs> I was the most nervous I've ever been. Oh, so really? I've, I've had to come off from the bench, and then. Played, I think I played the last half an hour of that game and then had to play again on the Friday. So I ended up playing three games in a week. So that was oh, that was a, a weird preparation for, yep. for first state of origin. Yeah, the yep. second one was obviously I started in the centres. But, um, you know, playing for Australia, I guess there's no greater honour. Yep. Um, you know, it's it's the, the, the top of the game. And yep. um, I got to do, do that alongside Brett. Um, I think the... the Oh, so did you debut on the same game? Or no, he de- he debuted um, the first game of that of that series. Um, thing, like a yeah, I, I think it was the Four Nations. And oh, so you I, debuted the same tour though? Yeah, debuted the oh, same that's tour. Awesome. So I think he's that's awesome. seven six four. Yep. For his Aussie number, and I'm seven six five, and then oh wow, I think that's awesome. For Origin, I'm two two five, and he's like two two seven. So oh, that's, that's awesome. That's ridiculous man. how yep. close we've always yep. been. That's ironic. But um, yep. yeah. Oh mate, that game was that game was unbelievable. I mean, you you get to play for Australia, and you know, it's, yep. it, as I said, it's the top. But to get to do it with your best mate, your twin brother, um, we had a that's ball crazy. out there. Yep. I think. Uh, he scored two or three tries early on, and he was just bagging oh. me. He was bagging me, so I really wanted to get across the stripe. And I think I ended up getting two tries late. But there's one, there's one picture that my mum has, and yep. um, I can't remember who kicked it, but they've put in a grubber, and yep. me and Brett have both both chased for it. Oh, really? And he's just gotten it before me, <laughs> and I'm sliding on my knees, just going. Like that, <laughs> That's awesome. And someone's taken yep. a snap as he's running across, ah. and Mum's got it in a yep. frame. It's one of the best photos we've yep. probably got together. And, Far out. and that was, yeah, that was our two in Australian so, jerseys. Man. Yeah, that was that was awesome. And and do you ever is it like obviously you're you, you know your twin brothers and you know people bring it up a lot, but is it is it something you actively think about like the, the for the. The chances of you both playing first grade and then playing for your country and then playing for a state, your state. Do you ever sit back and go, "Fuck, man!" Like the chances of this ever happening are, are so slim. Like it's, it's. Is it? Do you ever talk about? I guess how how not proud you are because that sounds arrogant, but like just how happy you are that you have both achieved it in a similar sort of fashion. So you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I guess. Um, yeah, it prob- we probably would be a bit more disappointed if. If one of us yeah, had yeah. done it and the other hadn't, because that's just the way we've been yep. you know, throughout our whole lives. If one one of us didn't make a rep side the next year, we'd both make it. Oh, okay, that yep. kind of drove us our whole careers. And, yep. um, yeah, I, I guess when we finish up and, and look back on it, you know, it's it's going to be something that we're very proud of. And, yep. um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we've had to work hard to get there, but I mean, having having the twin brother there is almost an unfair advantage, I guess, because you've always got someone who's going to train with you and who's going to push yeah, you. Yeah, it's very true. And you're going yep. to want to outdo. So yep. um, that's always been good for us, and it's always created a healthy rivalry between yep. one another. And did you both kind of, from a young age, was it you know definitely footy, like footy was going to be it? Or was it or you always kind of, you obviously an athlete, so it was like you would have done athletics and all that kind of stuff, or was footy always kind of the goal for you guys? No, I was more of a, a surfer. I, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I used to love going surfing every day. I, I think um, I think it was the under 18s. Uh, I didn't make the side the year before the under 17s, and Brett did. Okay. And it was the under 18s SG Ball trials yeah. for the Steelers. And I said to myself, um, you know, this is, I suppose, my last try at it. 
Oh, I'll, really? I'll go to the tryouts and yep. and try and play my hardest. And if I make the team, you know, I'll, I'll train as hard as I can. And hopefully it takes me somewhere. Yep. And, and that was the attitude I had. And then I guess when, when I made the side, that's when the, the brother and twin rivalry kicked in. We yep. just trained as hard as we could, always tried to beat each other. And um, I guess that's, that's kept me in good stead throughout my whole career. And so at, at, ninth, at 18, was it 18, did you say? Yeah. So at 18, there was a time when... You know, let's say you had a bad game. You could have gone... Like, footy wasn't a definite even at 18 for you. Head over to moneyball.com.au for next week's huge Super Bowl event. The Denver Broncos versus Carolina Panthers. With entry fees only $15, we are guaranteeing a $5,000 prize pool. That's right, for a measly $15, you can have a bit of fun and a bit of banter with the boys. Yeah, the boys. Plus a chance to win a piece of the $5,000 cash prize pool. Head over to moneyball.com.au and sign up for free today. Yeah, yeah, and I'm... I'm God knows what I'd be doing now. I, I did two years of a PE teaching degree. And, um, I You'd be working would, in the cold terminal with me, right? Probably would have finished that and been, been a PE teacher down the coast somewhere. And, yep, surfing. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm, I'm just lucky that it's worked out the way yeah, it has. Put in the effort. You did put in the effort. Um, so going forward, 2012 Dalian Centre of the Year. How was that? Was that something that meant a lot to you, or was it? Was it? kind of took you back it's like it was, I know when um, when I was playing I, I got nominated for uh, I just only got nominated though for wing of the year and I was like looking at the other names that I got nominated with and I was like I'm not no near as good as those guys what's going on here and like it, obviously you are good enough to be in the you know you got Dalian but what I'm saying is did you ever look at the other centres when you're like kind of shocked like taken aback by the level of people that you beat to be the centre of the year yeah <laughs> I actually got it in 2009 as well oh really <laughs> So that was the first year at the new club. Wow, okay. So Origin, I, Origin Australia and Dalian Centre. Yeah, so <sighs> what that was... Um, and you were out for six weeks as well. Yeah, so that was the uh, the first time and, uh, you know, every time you get nominated yep. for these awards, you you never think you're going to win it because there's there's so many good players yeah, out yeah. there. I mean, I've had to go up against Jamie Lyon and Justin Literally Hodges, Greg yep. Inglis, all those types it's of blokes and... Yeah, Far out. yeah, I regard them as yep. you know, great players, and um, when you win the award, I guess it gets you kind of shocked. But I get, I guess it was um, in that first year, you know, the satisfaction I got from that yep. being my first full year in centre and and twenty one, uh, 20, 20, 23 then twenty three was yeah, so um, yeah, yeah that that was very satisfying, and then I, I mean, you know, these awards, uh, although they're individual awards, they're more of reflection yeah, of, of your team yep, and your teammates and I guess you, know, you, you see a lot of the winners coming from successful sides and yep. um, you, you got to remember that your teammates are the ones that they get you there as well yep. so um, there's a lot of self praise there but you also got to remember your yep. teammates who got you there as well. Very true. Um, I've got your uh, two try saving tackles you're obviously pretty good at them but uh, <laughs> you got um, I got your first you won against uh, which Michael Ennis called the play of the year, your try saving tackle against uh, the New Zealand Warriors and Sean Johnson. A, Sean Johnson's fast as anything and you caught him from behind, which is outrageous. So walk us through it. I'll turn this around so you can have a look at it. What, what were you, you know, thinking? Like were you, like what happened in the play and all that kind of stuff? And uh, yeah, just just walk us through it. You playing? Yeah, we played this game. I think this was our home game, so we took it out to to Hamilton. And, um, whenever we play the Warriors, it's always a tough game. Yep. Like we know we're going to be, you know, it's going to be close going towards the end. And here, uh, they they caught us short here, so we were kind of on the back pedal. And um, I, I was just standing there, and then threw the dummy and stepped me, and I was like, oh shit, he's got me. He smoked me. And <laughs> lucky Sammy Perrot came in there because he kind of saved. Saved um, the day there. He kind of slowed him down a bit, and yep. then it was just a pretty much just a dive and try and pull his shoulders down. Yeah, so, back to it. Yep. So he um, couldn't get to the line, and lucky enough that it was a bit dewy that night, and he managed to slip over. And I guess a lot of fans came out and had the super mod signs, and yeah, yeah. Um, so that was pretty funny. And and then when Brett got to the club, they kind of made him the flash as well. So oh, okay, <laughs> that's kinda, cool. Yeah, yeah. Was, um, yeah that's something mad. nice. And yep. Um, yeah, 
but that that game that was a that was a very tough game and we that were lucky the to match, get away it? with it. Yeah, yep. they end up winning winning the match, but um, yeah, the Warriors they always give us a tough yep. game. So it's um it's like the Raiders against the Broncos. They always used to fucking give us a tough game. They'd be like playing terrible, and then they just like tear us up or something <laughs> out of nowhere. It's always there's always there's one some side team that yeah. does it. Yeah, <laughs> it's bullshit. Um, and um, I'm sure you can remember it. Your or- origin. Your when. Okay, so um, Bmoz has already kind of like told us. I guess the extent of your heroics because it's ridiculous. Oh. It's ro- bro. No, no. <laughs> you can deny it all you want. That was heroic. Even though I'm a Queensland, I was like, <laughs> no, don't do it. So you're on the sideline. You get told you've done your ACL. Yeah. Yeah. So walk us so, through. This will be, in my mind, this will go down in Origin history as well. Like the Beamers, the Morris brothers doing crazy shit. Yeah, I, it was it was weird because I was actually ch- uh, we kicked the ball and I was running down. Yep. And as I was running, my knee just locked, and Billy oh, really? ended up running around me, and I was like, "Oh, what's going on here?" Yep. And then when I kicked this ball, I kind of twisted it a bit more. Yep. And I was like, "Oh." The physio was over on the sideline, and I knew I had a bit of time because they were taking the tap. Yep. She pretty much told me that I'd done my ACL, and I was watching the play unfold, and I was like, they're coming this way. Yep. They're coming this way. And knowing um, Brett had done his shoulder, you know, I've seen Brett injured a fair few times, but the look on his face when he hurt himself, I knew yep. he was in agony. Yep. And you know, just for him to stay out there, I was like, oh, I can't let him make a tackle here, knowing how bad his shoulder was. Yep. Um, it just got up, and you know, adrenaline kicks in there. You just don't worry about what's going on with your knee, and... Um, yeah, Randy <laughs> surprised him actually. <laughs> he was like, nowhere. "Shit, where did you come from?" And, um, I mean, me and Brett laugh at it now, but um, yeah, I, I, you know, when Brett hurt his shoulder, I was like, "If you stay on and, and we win this game, you're going to be remembered forever." Yeah, hundred percent. I guess. Um, so that was an active thought that you thought my brother is injured and hurt now. I can't let him take a tackle when he when I know he's in pain. Yeah, being thing. the older brother, I've always tried to. Pre- protect him so, <laughs> and then you know I couldn't stay on because I could barely run and then he comes up with that that tackle that everyone knows about That's now crazy and, man it's crazy you know, the amount of pain he was in uh, it was actually pretty funny because when we both got back to the hotel I think we had half an hour of sleep each we were both oh really so sore and yep the next morning he, he could barely move and I could barely move and because you you missed four weeks five oh, weeks no I ended up missing six weeks and then I came back in game three and I'd done all, every fitness test possible to, to yep. clear it. And then the first run, Boom. I stepped off it and tore all the scar tissue again. So I had Twins to stay out there again with it. But it, it wasn't as bad, obviously. But yep. um, yeah, that, that um, Origin Series, I guess, it's going to be something we never forget yep. as, as that playing group. Um, you know, all the heartache we had for the previous... You know, Eight I'd years. Been, I'd been involved since 2009. Nine, yeah. So in Series, so... Yeah, all that heartache and same for blokes like Gal and, yep. and uh, Hainsey, Birdie, um, Louie, all those blokes. You know, it was just relief and you know, we were so proud that that squad managed yep. to do what they did, and especially going up there to win in game one. Yeah, well, Queensland, man, it's a, uh, it's a cauldron to say the least. Um, so when you came off the field and you're both, we was we we kind of like laughing about it, taking the piss out of each other. We were like, you, you came out oh. of it. Or you just were you that rattled? <laughs> no, we're both, both pretty stuffed up. <laughs> I, I guess, uh, you know, several months down the, the track yeah, when, they, yeah. when they were showing it, um, yeah, we'd have a laugh about it. and um, Yeah, I, I guess you know, people still talk about it every time Origin comes up. And, um, because if, if they... It's just one of those things. It's crazy because when you actually, you know, like think about the situation that you were both in, like if you just weren't twin brothers, you may not have been... Well, obviously you've been desperate. You're playing for country, but you may that main that extra little inch to make it for your twin brother to, to protect him may have you may not have saved New South Wales. That try may not have been saved. Therefore, you may not have won. It's crazy to think like that. Can obviously the connection you had out there, you know, plus obviously playing for your state, you, the desperate message you would go to to win. But yeah, it was a. Um, I remember watching it just going, "These guys are off their heads. What's going <laughs> on here?" Yeah, um, it's, um, yeah. Like I said, it's. Just the adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. The game's so fast. Yeah. 
But did you think about like oh, she just said I had my ACL and I'm about to yeah, go on well, it because you could fully, fully wreck your knee if you did that. Oh, I thought it was wrecked already. Oh so really? So you said, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Can't do it any worse. And then someone said to me the next day, you know, you could actually hurt it even more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, and your four try haul against uh, in round three, two thousand and ten. Would, would, do you look like is that something that kind of stands out to you? Oh, four tries in a game, man. It's not like yeah. I probably I haven't scored a double in that long, so four tries seems like a massive effort <laughs> these days. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I do remember that day because um, I, mean, I think we ended up winning sixty to fourteen or something like yep. that, and Benny Barber came off the bench and scored a hat trick as well. <laughs> um, Benny Barber. Yeah, but. I guess it was one of those days that you have as a player where crazy, yeah. your touch yep. turns to gold and um, we're lucky to get one try off, off their mistake, off the kick-off, and yep, it still yep. gets shown every now and then <laughs> where Pearcey passed the ball into Martin Kennedy's head. Um, every time I see that try, I still have a chuckle about that. But, yeah, I mean, as milestones go, um, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a good day for me, that's for sure. Is there, like, now that you're, you know, you're, you're 28, 29? 29. You're 29. You've done everything. Like, what else can you do in the game? Is it is it ever? Or you I haven't, haven't, done, I haven't. You haven't won a grand won final. A comp yet, so. so you haven't won a grand final. Yeah. Okay, but you've you've played in two grand finals. Yeah, played in two grand finals. Actually, what we won our uh, jersey flag grand final in 2005, and we've got our 10 year reunion. This oh, weekend, really? Yeah. So it it yeah. doesn't seem that long ago that we did it. Yeah, 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 10 years. 10 years. Um, it's crazy. Speed. 2005 is 10 but years yeah, ago. Yeah, definitely to, to win a grand final. Um, that's the ultimate goal. That's that's yep. what you play for. And um, to now that Brett's at the, at the club to to win a grand final alongside him, that'd be just crazy, be unbelievable. Yep. And um, yeah, it's the thing is you've got the for. side too to do it. Like it's not like you're so far away from it. You've been two in the last four years. Yeah. Man, that'd be crazy. Would that, that that would that would be a record that would never be broken? Both brothers playing for Australia, New South Wales, and to win a GF together. Surely there's. Hasn't Probably been the twins. Walters brothers are about the only ones. Yeah, it'd be wouldn't it wouldn't be there obviously wouldn't be many, but twins would Yeah. The twins would Maybe never the Burgesses. <laughs> <laughs> the Burgesses. Yeah. What about him being back, man? That's so good. So good for the game that he's back, I reckon. Um so looking back on, on your uh your career and what would you consider your fondest memory that you've you look back and you say that was a moment that I Step back and said, "Man, I'm just like a little kid from the Illawarra, um, Kaima. Yep. Yep, Kaima. I'm just a little kid from Kaima playing footy, and I just did that, and that's the proudest moment, kind of thing. Oh, I would have been playing for Australia, as, yep. as I said in that France game. We were just having so much fun. Yeah. Like we were just laughing at each other. Yep. Uh, we were bagging the opposition. <laughs> they were saying stuff back to us in, in French. French. <laughs> we had no idea what they were saying. We just, yeah, whatever, mate. But um." I still remember that, you know, we were just having a laugh. And yep. We're playing for Australia and, we're, we're, Crazy. you know, we're having the best time of our life. And Was it in France? Yeah, it was in France as so well. So even that so as well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that was, that was probably one of the moments that, you yeah. know, where Sunk you can in. say you, you know, you've, you've made it, you're yep. at the top of your game and, yep. and you get to do it with your brother and yep. um, how fun is this? And uh, craziest memory where you've been like, man, like funny or, or whatever. Craziest memory, maybe the, what you've seen in the shed, someone, I don't know, stitching his eye up, <laughs> friggin' or whatever. Craziest memory that you can think of. Putting it in the spot though, but. Probably <coughs> that the the origin that I did start that after I, my, I debuted was the one in Suncorp where Brett White and Steve Price had the oh, massive oh, stink, and yeah, then, yeah. then it was the. Up and under for the brawl. Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> that yeah, was, yeah. That would have been that crazy. Was intense. Um, what were you thinking then? When, oh, like when mate, that was all happening. I'd never been in a fight in my life. <laughs> oh, shit myself. I had Trent Barrett next to me. going, Moz, can you throw him? What? Did no. they? Kick, did they kick it to your side? Was it your nah, side? No, they just they just put it up in the middle of the field. And yeah, Baz goes, you better get your hands up, Moz. They're coming. <laughs> I was just like, oh no, here we go. <laughs> So, so okay. that yeah, that was that was crazy, and I mean. So Trent Barrett actually turned to you and was like, "There's yeah, going to be goes, something you, going." You, you better get your hands up. So, <laughs> and um, yeah, it was uh, that that was crazy because obviously there was it's a intense, fire, yep. and then you know, it, 
both teams were going at each yep, other. They yep. got the penalty, kick it down, just put it straight up, and then everyone just kind of just went... Like Far that. out, man. And it was just like, oh. Could you, could you feel the intensity, or was it oh, like, the, what was the, it like? Yeah, the crowd, yep. like, they were just going insane. Yep. You know what it's like. It's oh, like yep. You can actually feel it. It's like it kind of, like, comes in yeah. on you. Like, like, when, you, when you're running out to those boos, they yep. actually hit you yeah, in the face. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. So, after the fight, they were just going off. And yep, yep. It just created that... That, that, that tension. scene and yeah. that was that was the craziest thing I've been involved in. Yeah, that was that was mental, mental. Um, all right, bro, we've got some fan questions for you here. I haven't read them as I told you earlier, so we don't know what you get here. Um, <laughs> what have we, what have we got? <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. <laughs> if you had one lookalike in the NRL, who would it be? <laughs> Craig Bird. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, can you knock some sense into Dez and get him to focus on signing James Robertson? Goddamn halfback, oh, whatever. <laughs> um, could you? Uh, oh, could you imagine if Denon pulled a fast one and had Brett on instead? <laughs> um, have you ever? Have you ever pulled any banterous tricks like? Uh, yeah, have you ever you know switched places with Brett and said you're Brett and obviously Josh? Oh. It's not really something you do anymore. Yeah, it's not really something we do anymore. <laughs> I mean, we used to do it to our grandma. Like, oh, really? She, she bore the brunt of everything. <laughs> She's like old to, and senile. Yeah, you're I like... had to apologise so many times to her. Really? Yeah, we, we were bad. We what was, what was the, the within reason, like obviously, you know, you don't have to say, what was the, the most mischief you and Vmos got up to that you could, oh. within reason, within reason? Oh, oh our mum has so much dirt on us. <laughs> um, it was our brother's first football game. Our yep. older brother would probably would have been two. Yep. And we were sitting in the kitchen. He was getting ready for football, and we lit the kitchen on fire <laughs> by putting newspaper on the hot plates. And who at two knows that that's going to start a fire? <laughs> so, so he's both got the newspaper, yeah, put it on the thing, and lit it on fire. On, lit the kitchen up, so he didn't get to play his first game of footy. <laughs> And then there were times where mum would lock us in the room, would kick down the door. Far out. Yeah. Only two or three years old. Uh, we flooded bathrooms by pulling out the stuff in the toilet, like open up the toilet, pull it all out. <laughs> we were horrible, apparently. Just and terrors. I guess that's why we're so good to her now, because we <laughs> gave her so much grief when we were younger. Well, you set your but kitchen it's, on fire. It's, it's funny, like some of the stories she tells us uh, are funny now, but. For her. Intense back in the oh day. Yeah. <laughs> well, set you set your kitchen on fire. You set your kitchen on yeah. fire. Someone could have died. Yeah. <laughs> Far <laughs> out. That's crazy. Brick killed a guy. Um, uh, what's your favourite meal food? This is from uh, uh, Aroma. Favourite meal or food? Favourite food's probably Italian. Yeah, I, so you I, can't I, be I like Italian. spaghetti and meatballs. I like yep. pizza. Um, so, yeah. I cook spaghetti and meatballs the night before the game. Oh, okay, that's and your routine? Yeah, that's the routine. Oh, every time we're obviously playing in Sydney, if we're yep. away, I don't get a chance. But it's kind of been like a, a club for the boys as well. But, you know, we had uh, Trent Hogginson, um, yep. Josh Reynolds, Michael Leisha. They'd all come over the night before and we'd um, we'd have dinner and yep. normally watch a game of footy or something like that. And yep. It's just something, I guess, I've, bit of a ritual. I've done. Yeah, a bit of a ritual. And, yep. and the boys have jumped on board. So it's it's normally a good night before. You better watch it, though, because yeah. eventually you'll be feeding like 30 blokes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it like got to a stage where I was feeding about six. So far, yeah. yeah it, was, um, it was getting a bit too much <laughs> for a while there. Um, sorry, sorry, Des, I can't fly. I've got to um, prepare the meal for next week <laughs> for the 30 guys. Um do you think the NRL should look to expand in the next few years? Yeah, I, I mean... It's you, a tough call, eh? Like. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's a hard call. I mean, you've got clubs now that are struggling. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what do you do with them? Do you keep them or relocate them? And I don't understand. Who like, do you bring in? You know, I think a purse side would be good. Yep. But you know, the NRL is going to have to put a fair bit of money into yeah, that yeah. To, to get it up and running. And then the... With Queensland, you know, they're, they're so big up there. Yep. A second team is probably on the cards yeah, at some yeah. stage. But um, oh, mate, I think you know, if there's more sides in the comp, it's, it's better, I guess. Yep. But at the same time, you've got to make sure that all clubs are financially yeah, yeah, you don't want stable club, before yep. you, you go and yep. put in another couple of sides. 100%. Um, 
uh, I've already kind of asked that. Is there a major difference between the four camps of country, Australia, New South Wales, and PMs? So is there much differences or are all you know, professionally the same? Oh, oh, I guess as you go up higher and higher, it gets more yep. professional. Um, yep. I mean, yeah, there's when you when you get into the, the, the countryside and that, it's more just the, the coaches there and... Um, yeah, there's a, a couple of support stuff there, but when you get to the origins and and the test footy, that's when you you get the sports scientists yep. and you get the physios and yep. you get the support staff, and you know it ends up nearly being one sports staff for a, a player in those kinds oh, of sides. Oh, really? Wow. And, um, yeah, there there are a lot more. You know, there's cool a lot more staff there okay. to to cater to the needs of players. Yep. Yep. Um, I guess um, you've already. Oh no, sorry. And uh, when you made the tackle on GI, we kind of already asked you, but um, was your knee in pain, or this is the question? This is the question. Obviously, you said Jones, right? But did your knee was your knee actually in pain? That's from through all how. Like, could you feel it or none? Or really? Yeah, yeah, I could feel oh. it. As I said, when when I was running down for the kick chase, it just locked. Oh, and okay, every time yep. I was trying to run, it was it was Certain. really painful, and then yep. yeah. I, when I was hobbling, yeah, it was pretty sore, and I, I think I came off with about six minutes to go. Yeah, and yeah. That was the longest six minutes of my life because that's when Queensland were just down our end yep. for the whole smashing you six you. minutes. Yeah, just Brett on your came line up with that tackle. I think with you know a minute and a half to go or something, and yep. we were just holding on. And as he said before, like blokes after they walked into their sheds, they were all gone. Like, yeah, Bimos was saying there was yeah. blokes lying on the floor, pout, like uh, I think he said, who passed yeah, out? Someone Bo, passed Bo out. Scott collapsed. Yep. That's okay. crazy, man. Yeah. It, it, it's an iconic, iconic moment of, of the effort you just went to. Like People don't understand. Like, you just literally tore your bodies apart for that win. Like uh, I guess what made it so special too was the fact that it was the 100th state of origin. Yeah. And yeah. it was up there and you had we back were the underdogs. The wall. Yep. We knew we had to go play there twice and, and win we wanted to go up there. To finally and, break that and spell. And ambush them in the first game. Yeah. Come back to Sydney and, and win it and wrap it up and took a whole hell of an effort to get there so game two when you win it you walk in the sheds what, what are you what are you saying to each other what's the conversation like you know like what, what in that moment in the sheds when you're all standing around like obviously you know if it's private and you want to keep it between you so like you know all the boys i can understand that because you know I've, you know it's a team environment i understand there's like certain things that you keep between each other but what was the conversation like with each other was there a conversation or was it more just relief yeah i guess uh, oh, obviously that everyone was proud of what they'd just achieved yep um and then yeah i guess for the the blokes like us that had been there for a while it was yeah relief and and joy um what stands out for you when you walk into the, the change room in your memory what stands out for you when you walked in i guess it was just seeing everyone's faces and just yep. how stoked they were and um knowing that we'd we'd achieved something pretty special yeah and that, and that was probably the best thing see see the boys achieve that yep all right, bro. Thank you so much for coming down. I appreciate it. You've been amazing, as as your brother was as well. So, um, yeah, I um, yeah. Thanks for coming down, man. I I uh, messaged Josh what it was like a week ago, and you're just like, yep, sweet. So that's a credit to you, man. I appreciate you helping me out. So thanks for that, and um, anytime. Good luck for the, the the coming season, bro. Thanks, mate. Get through preseason first. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Head over to moneyball.com.au for next week's huge Super Bowl event, the Denver Broncos versus the Carolina Panthers. With entry fees only $15, we are guaranteeing a $5,000 prize pool. That's right, for a measly $15, you can have a bit of fun and a bit of banter with the boys, yeah, the boys, plus a chance to win a piece of the $5,000 cash prize pool. Head over to moneyball.com.au and sign up for free today.